And so we have listed here the adverse childhood experiences that are well recognized from studies over the last uh, couple decades. Uh, we commonly group adverse childhood experiences into abuse, neglect, and household dysfunction. So those were the 10 original ACEs that uh, Dr. Folletti and Dr. Onda uh, studied um, back in the mid uh, 90s and began to develop this data around ACEs. But what we've begun learning is there's a whole nother layer of ACEs um, as well. And so we've begun to think about this as a pair of ACEs. And so you can see not only do we have adverse childhood experiences, but we also have adverse community environments that many of our children face, uh, especially here in Memphis. Uh, I'm sure they're similar in, in Houston and, and for many of the communities where you are from as well. So when we think about layering all of the experiences and, and stresses that our children go through and then adding in things like poverty, discrimination, racism, uh, poor housing stock, community violence, um, these things really interplay uh, to affect the, the health um, and well-being of, of children in the future. So, um, so this is kind of the groundwork of, of what we know affects uh, children in the ways that, that we'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, next slide. And so this was, again, from the original groundbreaking study on ACEs that ACEs can have lasting effects on multiple areas of our health, our behaviors, and extrapolating to our life potential. Uh, also, very interestingly, we know that uh, the number of ACEs uh, increases uh, the likelihood in a stepwise fashion for these negative health outcomes. So, for instance, uh, having four ACEs put you, you know, at, on a population level is a much higher risk for developing uh, conditions uh, listed there like obesity, cancer, heart disease. Um, and so this has really proven true for uh, numerous different outcomes. Um, and so really points to the, the effect on public health um, that these early experiences in life have on um, our, our health in later life, but also early in life as well. Uh, next slide. And so I think, um, I think uh, Chris has this slide later as well. I don't think you can talk about ACEs without uh, having this slide as, as part of the talk, but this really gives a good picture of how ACEs began working in the lives of uh, all of us uh, from, from birth and even before. So thinking about historical trauma on generations before, as we mentioned, our social context, our environmental context, and then we have those experiences, the toxic stresses that disrupt our neurodevelopment in numerous ways and lead to these impairments, adoption of unhealthy behaviors, and all of the outcomes that we mentioned uh, just a minute ago. So, so in thinking about this big picture, where do we intervene and, and how do we intervene? And so just like many other health conditions, when we're thinking about primary prevention, uh, the primary care setting really is an ideal place to talk about these things, ask about these things. And in fact, uh, in recent years, the American Academy of Pediatrics has recommended uh, routine screening uh, in um, medical homes. And um, some places have taken this to varying degrees. You have California who's um, pass laws um, to begin screening um, all children in their state, and you have other clinics who have not yet begun screening. Uh, we also have to think about the resources and other things that we have available for children once we ask about these exposures. Next slide. And so again, this really goes back to that pair of ACEs. So when you layer in the adverse childhood experiences with the social determinants of health that many of our children and families face. Um, again, many of the areas that we've touched on, housing, food, education, um, the healthcare system, access to care. Again, we know that, that these things have a great impact on, on health, healthcare outcomes, um, life potential, all of those things as well. And next slide. 
And so this is just one example of that. Um, this is looking at uh, different factors on risk of premature death. And so you can see healthcare, what we generally consider healthcare to be 10% there, and social and environmental factors, actually 20%. And uh, many conditions, uh, social and environmental factors account for even a higher, you know, 30 to 40% there. Next slide. And so one thing that is uh, unique about our program is not only are we thinking about adverse childhood experiences, but we are also thinking about these health-related uh, social needs in a uniform fashion as well. So we are actually, before we try to ask our families about the uh, adverse childhood experiences that they have experienced, we're actually working to address some of these needs uh, first. So we are thinking about housing, transportation, safety, uh, food security, um, and then um, power, electricity, anything else like that that, that might affect um, their ability to live in a healthy environment and, and thrive. And so we found that we can really connect with families by asking about these things and addressing those first. 